I am delighted to be here today with Alvaro Ascaraga, who was president of the International Astronautical Federation from 1991 to 1994. Thank you very much to be here to be here with us today. And first, I would like to ask you a first question about you. Can you share us a few words about your early life and your early career? Well, first, I'm delighted to be here too with you and. Uh, and uh, all right, uh, I am an aeronautical engineer. I had a master's degree from uh, Princeton University in, in the United States in, in New Jersey and a doctor's degree from uh, Madrid University. I was the first uh, manager and the initiator of the Spanish uh, launching range, Sunday uh, launching range in, in Arenosillo in the south of Spain. Then I worked for, for INTA, which is the National Institute of Aerospace Technology for a few years. And then I went to the private industry uh, and I have been the managing director of, of aerospace and defense for Sener, which is a Spanish private company, for the last three years. And you of, of age now, I am in a kind of uh, council or counselor uh, or consultant uh, activity, but still active. And now moving to your uh, IF residency, what do you recall during this period? Well, uh, first, uh, my election was in 1990, and uh, if people don't doesn't remember, I recall that it was the year of the unification of uh, both Germanys. It was not the fall of the of the wall that was in 89, but the f actual unification was in 1990, and we have the Congress in Dresden. I remember that very well, and uh, there are a few anecdotes on this unification uh, business. Uh, not the minor one, that the prices we pay for everything, for our hotels and everything, at the end of the Congress they were substantially higher than at the beginning because they changed from the uh, German democratic mark to the real mark. But besides that, uh, it was a Cold War period yet, although the Soviet Union was not uh, in the position of strength that it was before, in, in, the, in the 60s and 70s, and uh, we were trying to have a a forum that they have would be the forum, as it has been before, to have a, an open discussion on matters of space-related matters and space exploration and space exploitation without uh, the burden of the political correctness or the, in other words, at, at the IAF, uh, both Soviets uh, and Americans and a bit Europeans and uh, Japanese they were starting, not yet the Chinese, the Chinese they were beyond the Indians, yes. Uh, uh, were free to express their minds and to make contacts and to and to try to make a cooperation because at the end we all appreciate that the space activities they are a human hand. I mean that it's a collaborative program between everybody on Earth. So that was basically the and then the four years uh, that I was as president. Uh, one of the problems we have, of course, uh, is those uh, congresses uh, they are very complex. We try to make the IF. Uh, the center of the technical, sometimes also the legal, with the sister uh, 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 organizations like the International Institute of Space Law and the International Academy of, of Astronautics, we try to have uh, uh, to be the center of uh, uh, of the action of, uh, of spreading the news, not only in technology, in basic technology, but also in uh, individual activities and in legal affairs. And that makes uh, the Congresses uh, very difficult to manage and to hunt too many papers. So one of the things uh, I try first, uh, I inherit from my past president, uh, George Van Rett, uh, it was a very good idea, is to try to reduce the number of papers in the Congresses. That is difficult because, um, of course, many people come to the Congress to present his paper. So if you reduce the number of papers, you reduce the number of potential assistance to the Congress. So at least I was able, and I'm very proud of that, to have the plenary sessions and the plenary lectures. So to have uh, eight, ten uh, sessions every in every Congress in which there is no papers, nothing but such a session, so people can listen and, and be present on those very important uh, topics and very important events, and then spend his time in his other more uh, I would say parochial, although they are not parochial, very important for him, but not important for the rest of the community. Specialist papers, more technical papers, and all this paraphernalia. And I think, and the second uh, change uh, uh, we introduced in the... Uh, I had the advantage to be the first president to last for four years. Before, it was only two years. And they changed the, 
the constitution, and I was the first one to take advantage of that. I was re-elected for a second term, so it was four years. So I was able to introduce the idea that the vice presidents of the, the members of the bureau to, to talk on, on plain language, uh, to specialize on specific items, not to be just members of the bureau. So to have one member of the bureau on communications, one member of the bureau on technical reasons, one member of the bureau on, on international cooperation, and so on. So I think that was the two which is still alive, the two items, so to have the plenary lectures and the specialization of the members of the Euro. Okay. And how did this experience at the, as the IF president change your perspective on space activities? Well, uh, a lot because uh, indeed it's a great honor and a, late, a great distinction to be a president of IIF. If I may say, uh, at least in my times, uh, to be president of IIF, it was uh, customary, not mandatory, but customary to have been vice president before. So I had been with the Federation for, for many years before being elected, and I can say that what changed my perspective is to be in the Federation. Thanks to the Federation, I, I have been able to meet people that I would never have met in, in other circumstances, to make cooperative programs that I, it would be very difficult, not to say impossible, to establish without the, the presence and, and, and the meetings of the Federation, not only the annual Congress, but also the meetings on springtime in Paris and all this, and other uh, small congresses we have. So I think it changed a lot. Uh, indeed, the Federation has helped in the last, uh, well, in, in all his life, in the last uh, 60 years, to make a most united uh, space activities and to let people uh, to work together, which is uh, what is needed. And what is your vision for the IAF? Well, for the future, uh, the IAF uh, 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 may lose a bit his, uh, his um, uh, Characteristics because, as I said, IF is uh, constantly uh, making a, uh, in an evolution. There are uh, bodies like the International Academy of Astronautics or the Institute of Space Law to make those two. They are more important, but there are many others which apparently can do the job of the Federation. I think uh, we shall f uh, fight and we shall uh, try to maintain the Federation as the nexus, um, the, the, the meeting point of all these international. Uh, partners doing things, and even if now there is a more uh, complex situation because it's not only Russia versus United States or United States versus Russia, it's also Europe, as, as ISA, as Canada, as Japan, India, China now very strongly. I think th those many parties, they should fit and, and feel comfortable coming to the, to the meetings of the of the Federation and then let their technicians and their specialists and, and their lawyers to to freely uh, talk and to freely uh, express their beliefs and, uh, and make a, a better world for everybody. Thank you very much for your insight. Okay, thank you very much for, for your time. So okay.